Modern builders trust coatings, chemicals and pressure treatments to protect wood. Yet Viking ships, houses and tools survived centuries in some of the wettest, coldest environments on Earth without any of them. This wasn't luck, and it certainly wasn't superstition. The Vikings used a preservation method so effective that parts of their ships remain intact today, while modern lumber often fails in a fraction of the time. What makes this story uncomfortable is that the method never vanished. It was simply ignored once industrial building prioritized speed over endurance. The Vikings treated wood as a resource meant to outlive its maker. For the Vikings, wood was not disposable. Timber was harvested with the expectation that it would serve multiple generations. This mindset shaped how they selected trees, processed logs, and preserved finished wood. They understood something modern builders often forget. Rot is not inevitable if moisture, oxygen balance, and biological access are controlled properly. Their preservation method wasn't a single step. It was a system built around tar, heat, airflow, and timing. Pine tar was the backbone of Viking preservation. At the heart of the Viking method was pine tar, produced by slowly heating resin-rich pine wood in low oxygen pits. This created a thick, sticky substance packed with natural antifungal and antibacterial compounds. Pine tar did not sit on the surface like modern sealants. It soaked into the wood's fibres, displacing moisture and filling microscopic pathways that water and fungi rely on. Viking ship planks were saturated with it repeatedly, not once, creating deep internal resistance to rot rather than surface-level protection. Vikings didn't apply tar randomly. Wood was warmed before treatment, either by sun exposure or proximity to fire. Heat opened the wood's pores, allowing tar to penetrate far deeper than cold application ever could. This step alone explains why, you know, modern attempts to copy Viking tar treatments often fail. Timing also mattered. Tar was applied after the wood had partially seasoned, not when it was green and unstable. The goal was controlled absorption, not sealing in moisture. Modern products attempt to poison rot organisms while trapping moisture inside the wood. Viking preservation worked by making the wood an inhospitable environment in the first place. Pine tar remains flexible, so it doesn't crack as wood moves with temperature changes. It repels water, but allows vapour to escape. The Oseberg and Gokstad ships are the most famous examples, but they are not unique. Viking harbour pilings, roof beams and household tools show consistent tar saturation. In some cases, original Viking wood actually outlasted modern replacement timbers that were installed during restoration attempts. Researchers have time and again noted lower fungal activity in tar-treated Viking wood compared to untreated modern samples, even when stored in the very same environments. This preservation method is, well, entirely achievable today. You start with dry or partially seasoned wood, then warm it gently, either using sunlight or some indirect heat. Next, apply pine tar generously with a brush or a cloth, letting it soak in fully. Let it cure for several days, and then apply additional coats until the wood just doesn't absorb any more. 
For outdoor use, a final thin coat of tar mixed with boiled linseed oil, you know, really improves penetration and reduces that surface stickiness. This approach works exceptionally well for outdoor beam sheds, boats, fence posts, tool handles, and even survival structures. Off-grid builders, you know, they really value independence from industrial supply chains. Pine tar can be made locally, stored pretty much indefinitely, and applied without any specialised tools. It does not leach toxins into soil or water, which is honestly a big deal. For survival scenarios, it preserves wooden tools, shelters and containers without relying on modern chemicals. Traditional builders appreciate that properly tarred wood often requires less maintenance over time than pressure-treated lumber. Industrial building replaced knowledge with products. Speed replaced patience. The Viking method, well, it requires preparation, multiple applications, and a real understanding of materials. It does not scale well for mass production which is precisely why it disappeared. But effectiveness was never the issue. Longevity was sacrificed for convenience, and the results are, unfortunately, visible everywhere in rotting decks, failing fences, and disposable structures. The Viking preservation method proves that ancient builders were not primitive. They were, in fact, practical engineers who observed nature closely and refined techniques over generations. Their success was not accidental. It was earned through discipline, restraint and respect for materials. In an era obsessed with new solutions, this old one still quietly outperforms most modern alternatives. If this kind of deep, practical history matters to you, subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this with fellow history buffs, builders and survivalists who value methods that actually last. These techniques carried civilizations across oceans and centuries, and they deserve to be remembered, used and passed on again.